And you are all set, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, James. We'll call the Town Hall Renovation Project Building Committee to order. Mr. Barron, if you would take the be so inclined to take the roll, please. Yes, members are asked to signify their participation when their name is called. Councilor Badrico. Here. Councilor Minor. Mr. Claffey. Mr. Mortensen. Mr. Mortensen. Crowd is here. He's there. I can see him, but I can't yeah. hear him. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mr. Murtha. Mr. Woods. There. Mr. Harpy. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you, sir. I'll entertain a motion for approval of prior meeting minutes. So moved, Don Woods. Seconded, Rod Mortensen. Okay, made by Mr. Woods, seconded by Mr. Mortensen. Any discussion? All those in favor of the approval of the prior many meeting minutes? Aye. 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 Unanimously approved, thank you. Public participation, any member of the public wishing to speak, raise your hand if you'd like to participate during public participation. If you're calling into a Zoom meeting by telephone, dial star nine to raise hand to be recognized. Use star six when recognized to speak by telephone. State your name and address for the record. We have one individual and I do not show that they're interested in speaking at this time. Okay, thank you, James. You're welcome. The next item is to take action on grant project. And I've invited uh, Mr. Jack Amalowitz, uh to give us an overview and presentation on the grant. He's the Chief Finance and Operations Officer for the school system. And we appreciate him taking out time out of his busy schedule. So Lou, uh, I give you the floor, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, Joe. Okay. Uh, as everybody's aware, uh, two grant applications went into the state about uh, October of 2018 to uh, take advantage of the school construction uh, grant program. Uh, one was for just the third floor board, the Board of Ed Administrative Offices, wherever they'd be located, and the other was for the Transition Academy. The uh, reimbursement rates are different on the two because, uh, uh, number one, because of the new construction, and as well as the differentiation between academic space versus administrative space. Okay. What you have up on the screen in front of you is the tremendously scaled down version of the summary just for the Transition Academy. Now, this was a you know, very large expansive spreadsheet where we had all the value engineering items and all of the COPs uh, right. scripted all across this to allow us to develop the uh, correct uh, dollars that were available. Lou, this uh, one's board offices. Would you like Transition Academy? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, could you please start with Transition? That'd be sure. Fine. There you are. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Jim. Jim. Okay. So uh, the way the process works up the state, and they have a very structured formal uh, arrangement that's outlined in the regulations and the statutes uh, for how you go about getting the grant, how you have to follow up with reporting, and how the grant is ultimately calculated. So step one of the process of uh, October 2018 is the first uh, two columns that are on the left with the yellow uh, uh, boundaries around it. So you had 812,000 of estimated construction costs of which they estimated 23,905 ineligible. And then you had another $40,000 tucked away in soft costs for owner's contingency. So uh, this is not a complete spreadsheet. So the numbers will not add down the column unless I add about 300 lines to it for, for the uh, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, but just the illustration is the number that was approved by the state uh, back in October 2018 as our starting point was a million one thousand three hundred forty one dollars with about sixty five thousand dollars of anticipated uh, uh, ineligibles. OK, so what transpired since then, because this project was unique, uh, uh, the two grant projects for the board were not the primary drivers like there would be on the school construction build or a renovation project just for a school building. It was primarily a municipal project 
with two unique aspects just for the uh, Board of Ed. Uh, we had to take a different approach with the state as far as uh, being able to truly document what changed from the initial design to what was actually built. So you had two phases that occurred. The first one being the value engineering, where it was necessary uh, overall for uh, there to be, you know, substantial dollars cut from the project uh, in order to reconcile your budget. As it impacted the just the transition academy slice of this, that was a reduction of sixteen thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars. So prior to construction starting. Our adjusted budget was just under 985,000. Subsequent to that, through the whole stream of uh, COPs, and you can see up at the top in the area of blue, it says revised project cost through COP number 335. Uh, that was about five to six months ago when we were at that point. And all activity on the Board of Ed projects was over at that point. So we were able to basically scrub the system do all the analysis and the evaluation of the activity that happened. And there was a net uh, reduction of another $17,000 in change on the change orders that were issued from the day the project started until uh, essentially when these two projects stopped. So we have a revised gross cost on the project now of $967,000 in change. Uh, the ineligibles that are here are you know, certain things that they just do not cover, like if you have to do work off site for utilities or underground water or things like that in the roads, uh, those things are never covered under a state grant. Uh, and then in addition, you have the four contingency amounts that are built into the original project. You have the three primary ones up till uh, construction occurs with the design contingency, the escalation based on the time from when the project uh, uh, starts uh, from a conceptual standpoint to when it actually gets bid out, and then any construction adjustments that are there. You also had $40,000 here for the owner's contingency for any other items that were overlooked or uh, changes that were necessary to occur. Since those dollars were never spent, the project essentially came in under budget by $117,000 uh, because though that money was never spent. So we had an actual out-of-pocket for the Transition Academy of $850,000. Uh, the reimbursement rate is 47.14. So when the last uh, dollar comes from the state, we should get $400,780.94 on that. Uh, I do have to say the state still is in process of the finalizing this. They may come up with something else that they want to consider ineligible, but nothing's going to be material at this point because the uh, cost uh, had gone down through value engineering and through the change order proposals. So there's really very little downside risk here uh, from $850,000 not coming through. So, so before I move on to town hall, any questions on this? Any questions of Lou on this? Okay, Lou, go ahead, please. Okay, so uh, Jim, if you could change the slide. Okay. So the third floor project here for the Board of Ed offices was substantially more in value. You know, we had about 12,000 uh, square feet of space uh, as part of this compared to 2,000 for the Transition Academy. And the numbers are just a lot larger. So our starting point was 6,270,000 with 332,000 being the ineligible uh, portion. Uh, I did have value engineering that brought uh, the cost down another $110,000. And then the net of all the COPs was essentially flat, you know, $291. It was probably $25,000 of reductions offset by $25,000 of additions uh, in the COP area. All the value engineering basically just cuts. So in getting to the finish line here, uh, you have the same methodology of any unspent uh, contingencies and allowances are reductions here because there was dollars not spent. Our eligible costs were just about 5.5 million. Uh, the reimbursement rate for uh, administrative space compared to academic space is 50% uh, less. So the 47.14% that we qualify for for academic spaces, 23.57 uh, is half of that. So I'm 
you know, figuring the reimbursement rate on the central office part is going to be just under $1.3 million to the town. So all these have been filed with the state. Uh, you know, I have a uh, promise that they're going to be working these things through their system in the next few weeks, uh, where everything at a minimum will get a uh, the 90% payment uh, before June 30th. Uh, I'm very hopeful everything will go smooth sailings and we'll have these projects 100% paid off by uh, the end of June. So uh, these would be, you know, very realistic numbers uh, uh, for town purposes. So the good news is, you know, these projects did come in under budget. So uh, there was a decent amount of money that could be shifted to other needs of the overall building. That's here. Any questions on this uh, part of uh, this particular Any grant? Of Lou, please. So Lou, would these come in as separate checks or would there be one gross check to the to the Yeah, they'd, they'd be separate wire transfers into the town uh, uh, bank account direct. So if everything held, 400,000 would be from the Transition Academy? Correct. And then if everything holds true, we'd have 1,295,451 and change on the central direction area. Correct. Now, the way the grants are structured is these are reimbursements to the town. So uh, these are general fund transactions uh, that they count on as revenue based on their, whatever their budgeting protocol is for the timeline of these uh, particular items. Uh, any other additional funding if the committee uh, needs additional resource allocations to accomplish certain things, those have to be a request of the town council to uh, fund in addition to whatever is currently uh, the allowable appropriation. So these are not dollars that go directly back to the building committee. Uh, these are dollars that go to the town general fund and are then uh, reappropriated by the town, uh, you know, as they see fit. Okay. Any questions on that part? So we're going to be approximating one million six ninety five four fifty one. If things hold true. Yes. Yeah, you know, right around there. Mm -hmm. Now we understand we uh, have to make a motion of acceptance. Is that the proper language or? Yes, that's correct, right? Uh, if acknowledging the project's complete, all the bills are paid, everything is all set. And even though the rest of the project still has finishing touches left, these projects are done. There's no, tr has not been any transaction activity for months on it. So, uh, you know, we're safe to close and nothing is anticipated to be done uh, through the building committee uh, that I'm aware of. So uh, these are, uh, you know, green light to the finish line at this point in getting them done. I wanted to extend my appreciation for the effort that you personally put into this. I know you put a lot of hours into this. Yeah. I also want to extend the committee's uh, appreciation for what Downs did, Frank, in yeah. particular, and the time he spent on lining up the change orders to transfer the information and data uh, to the school system. Right. And, uh, Frank made it happen. <laughs> Frank made it happen. Thank you. We did by approving them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a team effort. We got to get credit somewhere. Right. <laughs> and then uh, I also want to extend our appreciation uh, to the council uh, for its continuing support to see this happen over a number of years. Um, and at some point, um, came together and we were able to move this thing along. So uh, I look at this as making the taxpayers whole on any cost overruns that are association, associated with the other part of the project. Um, so we're thrilled to have it and excited to, to see that this is gonna come in. Do you need two separate motions, uh, one for the transition or is it one? No, one is fine as long as both projects are mentioned. Okay, thanks. Uh, Jeff Barron. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're looking for a motion to. Uh, we're looking for someone to move that the committee accepts the following school construction projects as complete: 094-0107 Transition Academy at Town Hall, and 094-0108, which is the Board of Education Central Offices. Mr. Mortensen, will you make that motion uh, based on what Mr. Barron is? Indicated. You don't have to just a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. There's there a second. 
Don Wood second. Thank you, Don. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. The motion is passed unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, have a good evening. Blue. Okay, thank you very much for uh, passing that. And uh, have a great evening yourselves. Okay. Thanks, Blue. Uh, bye bye, everyone. Good night. Night. Project update Downs. Okay, thanks, Joe. Yeah, it's been a while. How's everybody doing? We'll uh, in there. We'll get started with the financial summary, like we always do. Uh, looking at the approved changes. So uh, we're at the point now we're over a million, just over a million, 1,005,844.16. So that is an increase of about 7,600 from our last uh, committee meeting in February. So that brings our total revised uh, GMP value to 28,766,833.16. Uh, within the CM contingency, we have a couple uh, CM contingency requests prepared. Um, that would basically zero out the CM contingency, and we'll get to that shortly uh, to go over those couple CM contingency requests. We could scroll down, James. Uh, within the owner's contingency, we have uh, just over $100 left. Of course, that uh, that excludes anything specific to day two work. The owner's soft costs, uh, as, as most of you know, I have not reported on soft costs. I have not been given any numbers to uh, report on behalf of uh, the town. So I'm just showing the original amount we started with, uh, 1,706,810. Looking at the CIP funds that were brought into the project, um, during the last stage of the game here. Um, the CIP funds available to us initially uh, was 326,556.88, keeping in mind that a significant portion of that 326K is from the fiber loop that was uh, also approved coming out of CIP funds. I believe that was uh, 176,000 and change roughly. There's uh, up for one second. I just want to, for the record, Councillor Minor has joined us at 519. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Chris. Hi, how are you? Sorry, I couldn't get into Zoom tonight. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. Okay, so uh, getting back to the CIP funds, there's been additional CIP funds uh, sent over to the project, totaling 96,983.82. And to date, in terms of what you know, what work has been approved against the CIP funds is 272,136.75. Uh, we have a number of COPs to go over uh, this evening. I believe there's eight of them that have a, a increase um, that would be going against CIP funds totaling 97,807.74. And we are, uh, we continue to work on some COPs behind the scenes still at this point. So we are showing an approximate value to account for those, totaling 10,692.65. And when you factor in the pending and approximate and what's been approved, that still leaves a surplus uh, within CIP funds of 42,903.56. And again, that does not include any day two work. Uh, we have been keeping a separate list as most of you know, and uh, we will address that in this agenda in a little bit. Any questions on that? Any questions of Frank? Okay, Frank, go ahead. Okay, so I believe we dive into the schedule to give you a, a snapshot. Again, it's, it's been a little while since we've met, so we're, you know, we're happy to report we're coming down the home stretch in turn of the phase two work, getting ready to turn over the parking lot. We're close. Um, in terms of other work that's been completed at this point, specific to phase two, the envelope at the PD. Uh, we've, we've got the PD fully skinned in at this point. Um, the doors are on, we're fully enclosed there. Uh, the stair is, is essentially done. Um, at the lower lot that is adjacent to the police department, we completed the uh, light fixtures. Uh, we had two light fixtures to place, those are, uh, those are complete. The walkways, the new concrete walkways that were part of phase two, 
uh, mainly along Garfield and obviously the walkway going up to the, uh, the west entrance of the new town hall. All that's been completed. The uh, fine grading for the parking lot, all that is done. We have most of the plantings uh, completed at this point. The only thing that um, the only thing that's lacking at this point in terms of planting is planting within the islands within the parking lot. But we were putting binder course down today, um, so we will return probably next week to uh, com complete the plantings within those islands. Uh, previously approved change order work, the uh, cooling for human services. So that that work has been completed since the last time we met. And then as far as the work in progress, the binder course, um, when I gave this update and sent it over uh, to the town, this was a, a couple days ago, uh, but the binder course at this point is essentially complete. We'll get to see some photos of that completed work shortly. Um, the punch list, I noted that the gym was a work in progress, but at this point we are completed with punch list related to the gym. We had a, a scoreboard light that was out, that's been replaced. Uh, we had to hem uh, some curtains that were underneath the uh, bleachers to cover the sides of the bleachers. That's been taken care of. So we are expecting the mason to come back uh, probably next week at some point uh, to do the wash down on the cast stone along the west side of the new town hall. And they will also uh, wash down the cast stone along the south side. I say town hall, uh, I guess it's really technically the community center. So the west and south side of the community center is what they're gonna be uh, washing down. Uh, work on the horizon, again, the plantings, I mentioned that uh, the top course, now that the binder's down, we're in a position to put the wearing surface down for the parking lot. Unfortunately, uh, I can't negotiate with mother nature. We had planned to do the, do the work uh, at the end of this week. I think with the rain that's coming, it's gonna be put off till uh, next week. So talking with um, the paving crew, it sounds like they're, they're planning for Monday to come back and do the top course. And then from there, we'll go right into the line striping. Um, I believe there's one bike rack that also has to get placed. So line striping, signage and the bike rack uh, the seating, all that work is planned to happen over the course of next week. And uh, whatever comes out of this evening that we need to uh, plan for in terms of change order work, uh, obviously we'll get going on that as soon as we have acceptance. Uh, critical items and milestones. So I, again, the day two work has been a list that we've been you know, just talking about at this point, really, uh, I, I think, you know, looking at the budget, it's really up, it's not up to me, of course, it's up to the town and the committee to decide if we attack anything that's on the day two list, um, which we will go through. I have it all broken out so we can go through it a little bit. Uh, the final demob, um, there's really not much to talk about in terms of demobilization. We've done most of it already. <clears throat> most of it involved taking down the temporary fence. All of that is down. Um, we have one temporary toilet unit that's still on site. I imagine by next week that will come off the site as well. Um, I know we addressed some of the cleanup that was needed at the laydown area that was adjacent to our trailer across the street from the bus garage. But if there's any other you know, cleanup there, uh, we'll take care of that. Uh, and that would basically uh, you know, complete us and get us off the site. Uh, and then what's not there, what should be also noted as a critical item would be receipt of the final uh, certificate of occupancy. As most of you know, we have a TCO at this point. Now that we're wrapping up the site and uh, you know putting a, a bow on phase two, we will need to take the building official through the PD and, uh, and inspect the parking lot and get our CO. Uh, so I would consider that a critical item as well and a major milestone for the project. Any questions on the uh, schedule? Um, one thing I didn't mention uh, that uh, our superintendent mentioned to me in terms of the schedule, there is some fencing that has to go around the generator <clears throat> um, adjacent to the PD. So that work is happening next week, but there's also some guardrail that has to go in. And I 
I thought that was going to happen next week. It sounds like it's going to be more like the week of the 26th um, that that guardrail uh, will go in. So that's uh, part of the phase two work that was uh, part of the original contract. Frank, um, just uh, had a question on the um, work to be complete, work, work completed. Uh, the last one, previously approved change, order work, food pantry cooling. Is How is that working out? Uh, to be honest, Joe, I haven't heard anything negative. Uh -huh. Well, that's good news. Uh, uh, and as far as the generator, what what protection do we have if someone were to jump the curb on Cedar and come over this way towards the town hall? That generator would be exposed, right? There's no, there's really no protection other than. Well, there isn't any protection. other other than the fact that the generator is sunken down and is protected somewhat by a retaining wall. Okay. And then on top of the retaining wall, we will be installing a, a, a fence um, on on two sides of that generator. I guess technically there would be one uh, side that uh, is parallel to Cedar Street that would not be protected. Um, okay. That that wasn't part of the original design to do any additional protection on that side. All right. Are there any questions of Frank on the plantings? or existing trees, or does anybody have a question on that? Yeah, actually, thanks for bringing up the trees, Joe. I also want to mention, uh, again, some late, late breaking changes that I've been made aware of. Um, again, I'm not, I'm not there. I have more of a bird's eye view on the project now. So I get bits and pieces and I try to do my best to give you the full update. Um, in terms of the trees, again, with the, with the fiber loop being introduced, um, and the plantings were released uh, ahead of that plan. Um, there are some trees that we will not be planting, and I understand the town will take those and, and repurpose them as they see fit. I believe there's five or six uh, trees that would go back to the town, and we would offer a, a credit for the labor to not install those. Okay. Mr. Miner has a question about existing trees and sight line. Mr. Miner? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just a quick question. I know uh, as they just completed the last of the lower parking lot lighting, I happened to be on site the other day. And if you can remember where the old retaining wall used to be going up to the building and there's a staircase there, there are three white pines that are clustered together that the light pole is actually just about growing you know, the trees are growing around the, the light pole. So there is not sight lighting on the row of parking facing Garfield Street right on the edge. Uh, question I've got is it's right on the edge of our scope of work in terms of the project area. But I was curious to see what Don's thoughts were or anybody else's thoughts were in terms of removing them. Because now that the rest of the plantings have gone in it's it one aesthetically looks off balance two it's creating a sight lighting issue that those parking spaces aren't illuminated and the way that the trees are if you went to top them and shorten them th there's almost no range of growth and as you pull out the driveway it creates a temporary sight line issue looking to the east until you get past those and then you can see up any Comments from anybody? Mr. Woods, do you wish to comment? Yeah, I, I did take a look at it today. I spoke to Chris earlier. Um, they are not really performing any function other than an obstruction of view. So from a security point of view uh, and an aesthetic point of view, I don't see the advantage to, uh, to keeping them. Um, and Chris is right. They've been limbed up from the bottom. And if you drop them down to below the site lighting, you'd have basically a a meatball uh, really wouldn't be that great of a looking tree. And um, yeah, so in my opinion, if it's something that can be done, um, I they don't serve any purpose anymore. And it would give you a much better view into the parking lot uh, nighttime for sure. And then 
Chris also was interested in the, there's an ash tree on the other side of the parking lot. Uh, those trees are, are, are worth nothing. It, yeah, it probably yeah. wasn't even planted. It was probably just something that, that grew there. So uh, if, uh, if you had the funds and the desire and the time to remove it, uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea either. Any other comments, Mr. Mortensen? No, I don't know if this is actually outside the scope of the project, which I thought it was within the scope because we we redid the sidewalk. Uh, I don't know if it's something our uh, parks department or the tree warden wants to take down or whatever, but I don't know that we're going to have the funds to do it within the pro. <clears throat> excuse me, in the project building committee's funds, but I agree that those pines should come out. Um, but when and who pays for it is up in the air to me. Mr. Barron, do you know if the town has any view on this at this point in time? No, I don't. Okay. I think the easiest way to handle it might be just to uh, make the recommendation and let our own crew. Yeah, I've got, I got to justify moving the cost somewhere. So I probably if we're going to we either um, divide it out because it's not within the scope. We can make a recommendation, sure. Otherwise, we'd have to add it as a day two item. Um, uh, personally, I'd prefer to see the tree warden or whatever look at it. I mean, I'm, I, I know I'm a tree hugger here, but I hate just clear cutting trees just because it doesn't fit in with the new environment. I'd like to see, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not going to hold it up, but um, that does not look that does not look unattractive to me. Who is the tree warden? Um, I think Clay. Tommy. Oh, Bill Lapierre. Okay. Yeah. Well, why don't we uh, request Mr. Barron that he, if he can facilitate that, get his view of it, and uh, oh, yeah. question. I, I don't see an issue with the committee on it. Other than Gail has some concerns, but we certainly want to uh, satisfy her concern. But I don't know the cost associated with it either. So, Joe, Ron yes, Martin. yes, <clears throat> yes uh, to Gail's concern. <clears throat> even though, uh, you know, we are not that we would put those extra trees in that spot, but <clears throat> we are going to have. If you're taking out, it looks like three or four trees or so, we are gonna be replanting somewhere those extra trees that can't go over the fiber loop. So I'm right. not gonna say it's a wash, but. Uh, yeah, it's not the most attractive uh, tree growth that you can imagine now that we've done the new project. So um, I don't think we need a motion on it, but we can direct Mr. Barron about our concern and for him to facilitate that concern in the areas that he feels appropriate and report back to us on it. Yeah, I will, I will request the, the tree warden to take a look at it. Okay. Is that fine with you, uh, Mr. Woods and Mr. Minor? Yeah, that's fine. I, yeah, that's that, fine. That okay. Sounds like a good plan, the possibility of repurposing the trees that we might already have that are the same stock and style. Okay, great. Any other questions of Frank he'd like to move on? Go ahead, Frank. Okay, all right, getting over to the COPs now for our uh, review and uh, approval this evening. I have a couple uh, coming out of contingency I mentioned earlier, one of them being COP 339. I had actually presented this back in February and we tabled it uh, to come to this meeting and get presented. So 339 is to extend our general conditions beyond what was uh, originally contracted. Originally, we had general conditions going through the end of December. This COP request extending our general conditions for the month of January, a portion of February, and then uh, coming back in April uh, for a couple weeks to wrap up. Um, we've been on site longer than that. We've actually covered the entire month of February and the entire month of March that we're not looking for in this COP. We have captured 
to be totally open with everybody. We have captured some general conditions in the other COPs that we are presenting, um, but it, it does not uh, cover us completely. But knowing that we have the budget constraints, uh, we are you know compromising uh, with respect to general conditions. So the extension of the general conditions is going against the CM uh, contingency. Therefore, there's no increase in cost to the overall uh, GMP. The winter weather conditions, uh, the next one, COP369, again, another CM contingency item. We are utilizing basically what's left after we extend the GCs and taking that out of our CM contingency. There's roughly uh, 14, between 14 and 15,000 uh, coming out of CM contingency, going towards the uh, winter conditions that we uh, experienced. Um, so it's it's a portion, and then the balance is down below in the next uh, list. Any questions on that? So the fifty three one forty eight is net of your the reduction you already made out of your contingency. Correct. It's the net add. Yep. Go ahead, Frank. Okay, so the COPs, uh, again, going. this is going against the CIP funds that have been previously approved, starting with COP 266. We've been going round and round with these flagpole uh, brackets. We went back to the drawing board. I don't know how many times, but we uh, came to a conclusion on it. We finalized uh, drawings. Uh, we're ready for fabrication. Um, this is to finish off the brackets on the west side of the building that will accommodate the two tapered uh, flagpoles that will be tilted five degrees off the face of the west town hall entrance. So that totals 10,617.65. And then 369, I mentioned, this is the uh, balance that is owed based on the winter conditions um, that we experienced uh, basically, it's broken up into thirds to give you some uh, flavor of what makes up this number. <clears throat> it, it involves the masonry at the PD dealing with the winter weather condition to build the skin around the PD. Um, that's all of the heating, the tenting, the fuel. Uh, there's also the concrete contractor that um, set up poly protection, blankets, ground, ground thaw heater. The ground thaw heater was mostly the uh, site work subcontractor. And then there's uh, some additional costs for the roofer to deal with snow at the roof. That was a, a small cost in the grand scheme of this COP, but the total is 53,148.32. Uh, 371 is to deal with the uh, PD again, this time on the west side. If you're standing in front of dispatch, it would be to the left of that bow window uh, if you guys recall, I, I, we may have talked about this at the last committee meeting. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, we were creating an opening there to the left of the bow window at dispatch. And when we got into that, we had a, an issue noting that there was an elevation change, knowing that the work would be extensive to create some sort of ramp or stoop outside. Uh, we elected to go back to brick. Fortunately, there was a surplus of brick from the PD veneer that we were able to, to utilize. Uh, there was some additional demo, however, to make the patch not look so much like a patch. So there was additional demo to go back to a control joint. Um, and that's what plays into this, the, the additional demo. Obviously, the labor to put the, um, the brick back, $7,005.45. The next one, 372, another existing condition at the PD. Um, part of our base bid contract was to remove and replace the existing roof. Unfortunately, as we got into that removal process, we discovered that the substructure was uh, almost completely rotted. All of that structure had to come out and get replaced. Um, that was all time that was verified. Uh, 15,409 373, that was a function of the demo at, again, at the PD, um, at the corner of, of dispatch. We had a section there that was cantilevered that tied into the existing town hall. So when that town hall went away, you guys may recall, we had to temporarily shore a corner of that. We ended up putting in uh, permanent steel to support the corner of dispatch. And in doing so, 
we also disrupted the uh, soffit above. So the EFIS portion, that top white band on the face of PD had to be repaired and replaced. Uh, so that totals $4,103. 374, we carried a, an allowance from, this is actually stemming from phase one, when we relocated a certain number of cameras within the Parks and Rec Department. I believe we had an allowance of uh, $5,000. It was part of a previous uh, COP that was approved. Um, we drew down against that allowance to take care of some of the existing conditions within the PD, knowing that we didn't need to spend to spend all of that allowance and we didn't, and knowing that we had the budget constraints, it made sense to use some of that. And some of this, um, some of the allowance that was spent here was to deal with the PD as well. And uh, some of the structural issues that we had along the, uh, the skin of the, the building. So in the end, we ended up saving a small portion of that allowance, uh, giving back $687.48. The next one, the asphalt curbing, Again, so this is at phase two, we had made a recommendation that uh, it would be the most appropriate to install new curbing to separate the lower lot. That's the parking lot next to the PD from the new turf so that cars don't drive on the turf. So that work uh, was incorporated um, with the lower lot. It's about 250 feet of curb. So it's, uh, I think it was 750 a foot plus the labor to put it in plus some supervision time. So that ended up being $4,422.60 all in. And the last one, I noted condensate piping. That's technically, that's not true. I guess it, it doesn't really matter. It's piping that had to be raised up, but it was refrigerant piping. At the roof of the PD, we had to raise it. Unfortunately, we didn't have a choice in order to maintain the warranty for the new roof. Uh, we had to do that. So we did do that on, on a time and material basis to keep that moving. Um, so that was all time verified in the field and that totaled 3,788 and 23 cents. So all of these uh, COPs together totaled 97,807.74. Is uh, Chris O'Neill participating tonight? I'm here, Joe. Hi, Chris. Would you uh, mind giving uh, the committee uh, your last review on the installation? The applied pull the whole system in terms of. Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, the last item that we had basically as part of this change order was, you know, being kicked back and forth for a while was uh, design, uh, a change in design as to how the flagpole was mounted through the building itself. Um, and then what happened was there was an issue with the size of the flagpole versus the design. Um, collar, so we had to have that redesigned to accept the correct size flagpole. So that was part of what uh, Frank's COP is for the flagpole. That's just for the pole itself um, to hold the flagpole. So you'll have the two flagpoles that will be mounted to the building uh, about 18 feet off grade above the west canopy. Uh, and then uh, the flagpoles are manual flagpoles, so they uh, need to have a cleat which ties off somewhere on the building, uh, typically at the base of the flag. So uh, in order to raise and lower the flag, you will uh, need to have a ladder to access the cleat, tie off cleat to uh, raise and lower the flags uh, as needed. Uh, so that's pretty much the specified flagpole system that we have in place right now. Got any other questions on that, Mr. Martinson? So <clears throat> am I correct in assuming then every time the flags have to be put at half mast or changed, someone has to get up a on a ladder, get on top of the canopy of that entrance to get to the flagpoles? I believe that is a case. I'm not sure if it, they would need to get on top of the canopy, depending on how long. Uh, how far away we can get that cleat. Um, but yeah, I believe I believe we need to be up on top of that canopy at the moment uh, to get the, the flagpole tied off. I, nothing for nothing, This these flagpoles have been an absolute nightmare. 
And if I spent all this kind of money for the flagpoles and every time, and it is quite often, by the way, that flags are put at half mast or have to be changed, that you'd have to get out on a ladder, get up on top of, to me, where I see these are being placed, you're going to have to get up on top of that canopy to get to it. I just feel like that's a pretty poor design. I guess there's nothing you can do about it now, but I think uh, there wasn't a heck of a lot of foresight into that. That's all. Thank you. Mr. Minor. Mr. Minor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I would, I would have to agree with Rod that we definitely fell short on the ability to look forward to the need to service and maintain those flags. Yeah, I don't think the question that serviceability question ever came up. We were so focused on other issues related to that flag that the committees, uh, in fairness to the committee, they uh, they assumed that there was some sort of an automated system with that, rightly or wrongly. I will tell you though, that uh, Mr. O'Neill has worked diligently to try to. Uh, somehow mitigate this. He sent me an email today. He said, Joe, I did a little digging and did not find much in the way of electronic flagpole operators. The ones I did find are made for a flagpole with an internal haul yard and specific pole has an external haul yard. Even then it appears that it still needs to be activated at the pole itself and does not have any remote capabilities. And I just want to be fair with the committee. Uh, the town's not pleased with this and doesn't see it as functional. But this no, can I, this is Frank from Downs. Can I just add one thing? Um, yeah. And I, I, you know, I understand the concern. Obviously, we would hate to leave this condition um, the way it is now. I have a call into the flagpole manufacturer. I have to imagine this isn't the first time this has ever happened in the United States so or the world. So maybe there is a way or an alternative option that we have that we can operate the flagpoles at grade either through um, the introduction of additional pulleys to operate the rope that would come down the side of the, the canopy. And I'm totally you know spitballing right now. I don't even know if that can happen. Right. But I do have a call. I just tried, as a matter of fact, I just tried him again to get him on the phone before this meeting to try and get an answer. Right. I'll keep I'll keep trying and, and see if there's something we can come up with that's a better solution. Mr. Miner. Yeah, maybe as a plan B, Joe, to look at the possibility of maybe putting up the Connecticut flag and a Newington flag over the top of the canopy and doing a freestanding ground level where the memorial was going to be placed, which would be just to the right of that entrance. And I believe, Frank, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe there was actually a ground light that was set up to illuminate that memorial. So there's actually a light in the ground already there. I don't know if that's what anybody's viewer opinion is of that, but I think that might be our best resolution if we can't come up with some type of a, a halyard system that is, you know, A, aesthetically pleasing and B, functional. I, I think this is going to be an issue that can only be resolved with um, town administration being satisfied that it's functional. And um, I think uh, Frank has got a good suggestion. They're going to work hard to come up with some Compromise, I guess, is the only word one can use to uh, to make this functional, perhaps in a way that uh, won't be totally cumbersome or some other option eventually the town will go to. But this is within the scope of the project, has been for many months and years, and we are where we are with it. I can't see who's next, James, for raising their hands. I'm sorry, the name isn't coming up. Councilor Draco. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm just curious. Um, overall, this is a change order. How much have we spent on this? I'm just curious. How much have we spent on the flagpole issue to date, total? Well, this price is actually reduced from the original. It was over eleven thousand dollars. Isn't that correct, Frank? 
Yeah, that's right. And we this is the total cost to deal with the flagpole. We we always carry this in our in the financial reporting as an approximate cost. We you know there isn't anything on top of this. This is the the additional cost period. There okay, isn't so anything there's else. No, no no throwaways that we've done so far because of this. Not that I know of. No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the change orders presented by Frank? So I'll entertain a motion uh, for approval of the 97,807.74 uh, with an asterisk on 266 that we're going to look for a workable option. And um, I'll ask for that motion to be made, please. Make the motion to approve the change orders as presented. Okay, is there a second? Uh, second, okay. Don Woods. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the ayes have it. So approved. Uh, we'll now go to um, Mr. Barron to consider to take action on fund transfers required from the change order motion just made and approved. Yes, um, looking for a motion from the committee to uh, approve authorization for payment of the uh, the transfers. I don't have specific amounts. Um, I'm not even sure if transfers are needed, but if they are, I think you want to authorize me to, to do so so that they can be paid. Okay. Mr. Mortensen? Uh, Joe, my internet is breaking up here. I couldn't oh. understand any of that. Think of okay, uh, Mr. Woods, would you make that motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to authorize uh, Jeff Barron to um, make any necessary transfers uh, under these change orders. Thank you. Does that work? Yeah. Second? Second. Okay, thank you, Gail. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 You guys have it. Right. Motion's approved. Joe, question, Rod Mortensen to the committee. Yep. Is anybody having problems uh, with the Cox internet if you have it on there? I know Cox went to a uh, different system on their internet system in terms of what they consider to be improving. I got an email late in the game from them to make a decision at my home system. I don't know. If it's affected anything else. Thank you. They gave you an option up to the today to keep your router or have it upgraded or go with their new system. But they also told you that the old router was going to be retired <laughs> in the short future. I'll, I'll <laughs> have an IT person take care of it. <laughs> That's Cox, man. Don't let them in your house. You're going to end up doing the work yourself. Okay, um, do you like to uh, share those pictures with us at this point, Frank? Uh, before I get to the picture sharing, I just want to go over the orders yeah, of magnitude. Yeah, you so your game plan, sir. That's all right. So, uh, so yeah, uh, from the last meeting, we talked about this first one, three fifty-five, to reconcile the bond. That is typically done at the end of the project. Uh, so we are working on trades to confirm uh, zero additional bond costs uh, for subsidive completed work as part of phase one. We are reaching out to the rest of the phase two trades to firm up any uh, bond invoices that we need to. And you know the hope is that by the next meeting, I imagine we're gonna meet in May sometime that we can wrap this up. Uh, 378. So we have a PR from the design team to address, I hate to say it, to address uh, some, some more issues at the PD, um, existing issues, which I, I was gonna put on the day two list, but I think if, if, I, if I do that uh, and we try to go for a CO uh, and, and not address some of these issues, we, we won't have the CO. So <clears throat> what this is, is, uh, specifically lighting for the PD. Sorry about that. That's okay. We did uh, we did get wiring to some of the fixtures that were fed from the old town hall in the stairwell, if you guys recall. 
After we did that and we turned the, everything on, there are still two lights in the PD um, that need to be wired. I looked at this to light to get wiring to those lights shouldn't be that big of a deal, but the bigger deal is getting power to uh, baseboard heaters on the third floor of that, I guess you would consider it the PD now, um, to get power and low voltage uh, to a control panel that uh, originally fed power to these unit heaters. I believe there's half a dozen unit heaters on the third floor that need to be connected. Um, so we're putting a rough order of magnitude on that. Uh, since this is a formal proposal request from the design team, it has been solicited for pricing. So we're, you know, we're putting an estimate on it of roughly 14,000. The next one is to uh, deal with some uh, interior finishes at the PD, specifically the floor, floor base. After we got through the infills I mentioned on the outside, at dispatch, there's small sections of floor base, base that needs to be put back on. Again, a rough order of magnitude there, just over $500. Um, the next one's the credit for the plantings I had mentioned, not planting the trees. Again, just an estimate there of what we would anticipate giving back, uh, depending on which wh whatever we decide to do there, that, that may fluctuate a little bit. Uh, 381, the handicap signage. So again, uh, the design team has directed us to add a couple uh, handicap spots in the lower lot that weren't part of the original plan. Uh, I know we're going to take care of the striping. That's not an issue, but the signage um, would be. So we've earmarked uh, an estimate for that, just over $1,000. And then the last three are reconciling what's left in line items within the GMP, uh, specifically the, the site work, which is 382. There is money left over there from the original GMP. The dumpster and toilet allowance, I had given a portion of this back, I believe at the last committee meeting. Uh, so this would be the roughly the final estimate of what's coming back to the town out of those two allowances. And then 384, similar to 382, uh, this is a painting line item within the GMP um, that would go back to the town. This is a portion that's unspent, uh, roughly 2,500. So when you net all that, uh, it's just over 11,000. Um, I think the approximate value, the last time we met, uh, it was about 9,500, 9,600. So it hasn't increased much only because we've introduced uh, these credits now coming into the picture to offset uh, specifically the, the uh, field conditions at the PD. Any questions on that? I'll tell you, this uh, PD thing is just, from every aspect you can think of, it's, it's turned out to be a nightmare. You know, in retrospect, the committee would have never restored this facility had we had any idea that there were so many issues that be discovered by Downs as we went through this. Most, I think, insulting issue involved was the uh, heating system that was tied to the boiler in the old building that was unknown to everybody. And we had to go in and make those corrections. And this thing has taken on a life of, a, of its own. And if you're talking about driving deficit financing, this thing in phase two in and by itself has certainly accomplished that. I just, I mean, I'm just very disappointed, not in anything Downs has done, but I'm very, very disappointed that it's come to this. And I guess we did the right thing by not trying to restore the old town hall, because we'd probably be drowning in these kind of issues if that PD facility is giving these kind of problems to us. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, we did address the heating issue within the stairwell. If you guys recall, you approved a new unit heater within the stairwell of the PD. So we, we addressed that. And now we've got these other baseboard heaters. Um, I don't think we want to leave uh, those spaces without heat. So the design team has, uh, you know, given their input. And, and oh, yeah, we need to see, oh, I mean, we're, we're you know, <clears throat> We're already into it. 
but it's just, you know, you feel like you're being, uh, I don't know, put in the corner, not by you, but I'm just saying it's, uh, I, I just don't know how the, you know, all these things got discussed early on where some people wanted to make an issue of not to touch that building, just take it down. And others had other positions, but we were always encouraged by the experts to be that this thing was going to move along in the satisfaction of, uh, of everyone concerned. And if you look for the initial process that was going to be applied to this is we were going to, you know, put a new skin on it, do some interior cleanups with lighting, etc. And we were on our way. Um, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Councillor Minor has his hand raised and then Mr. Butat. Okay, I just want to say one last thing. The town has a very strong concern about the flag systems and um, we're going to have to do something dramatic to straighten that out. Otherwise, we may see a motion to reconsider, even though that's been let out. I know it's going to create problems. Even if we have to make some payments, we wouldn't do the system if the town is strongly, strongly opposed to it. That's for damn sure. So let me uh, recognize Paul first because he hasn't had a chance to speak this evening and then I'll go to Mr. Minor. Paul. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just had a uh, question regarding the uh, heating up on that third floor area and whether or not uh, we've considered, um, you know, cooling. Do we have, uh, you know, that accounted for as well? or just heat and then are we possibly looking or reviewing maybe a multi-zone split uh to accommodate um you know what would be required up there again i don't know what, to what uh, level uh, the discussion is taking place right now uh, we really haven't been looped in on that so i just wanted to uh to give my uh, uh input there um uh, as far as the town manager and i have discussed the the flag mounting on the uh, building itself uh, and we raise and lower the flag whenever it's required to do so. If it's in the middle of winter and we have snow on the ground, you know, we do have a concern of, you know, someone taking a ladder uh, and, you know, climbing up on the side of the, the building. So, again, from a design point of view, not sure if it was taken into account that you end up having a canopy above these flags and not a clear, you know, uh, um, walking uh, location where you can actually walk up to them and raise and lowering uh, the flags. But with the canopy being directly, you know, uh, below them, uh, that may be the impact that we have. We have glass on both sides, so relocating uh, the the ropes or using pulleys uh, may be an issue. Just because now you have steel or metal framed windows uh, to the left and to the right of that canopy. Uh, so just something to keep in mind uh, as you go forward. Thank you, Paul. Mr. Miner. Thank you. Uh, similar to piggyback and what Mr. Batat just brought up, I hope we're looking at least if we're going to spend fourteen thousand dollars for essentially probably a few hundred square feet, or let's just say eight hundred or a thousand tops. Uh, I hope we would look at other alternatives outside of just electric baseboard. Uh, with that being said, from my recollection, being up in that area on the numerous times that we toured before construction began, I question whether or not there was even heat functioning up there uh from my recollection it was just basically an abandoned section that was really not being utilized for anything other than cold storage paul do you have any recollection of that one way or the other uh, i do uh, i actually had an office area up in, inside that particular uh, location at one uh, point along with it um, then it was uh, handed over to um, the Central Health Connecticut, uh, dist uh, the health district at one point had office. So, so we had window units for air conditioning uh, okay. and baseboard uh, register heat up there. So now okay. that this space has been, you know, uh, modified for use, I think we still have to take care of, you know, having some type of climate control. No, I, I would concur with that, that uh, I would just rather look at it, not just as electric baseboard, which would only solve part of the problem, but the you know cost efficiencies that you gain by having many splits in the area that it would ne be necessary to handle, I think that might be more favorable to look at that option as well as restoring as it was, which would be just radiant you know electric baseboard. Uh, but that that's the only thing that I would have to say on that that we just look at both. Right. And as yes, you said, yeah. unfortunately, a lot of this was in my opinion, dropped from the standpoint of not being predetermined as well as we should have 
on early work done by the engineers to determine what was being fed from where. And as far as I'm concerned, I think this is another issue that, in my opinion, is an omission or an error and should be looked at at the end of the project as the other E&O issues that we do have to try to come to some uh, consensus without having to go down the roads of, uh, you know, legally pursuing it on either side. I think this is something that should be worked out between the town and uh, the, the design team, as well as the architect to try to come to uh, consensus on how to resolve some of this stuff without litigation. So I hope that was at least still being explored. Thank you, Mr. Miner. Uh, who's up next, Mr. James? James, who was? Next individual would be uh, Chris O'Neill, then Frank and Paul again. Mr. O'Neill, please. Thanks, Joe. Uh, yeah, in terms of uh, what we're doing for the, the heating and, and uh, cooling in the existing PD space, um, what we're doing is not adding any additional heat or cooling to those um, rooms that are up there, uh, just tying back in the power to the thermostats for those units in the rooms. And we only added a unit heater to the stairwell that um, no longer had a heater that was tied into the um, old town hall. So. The only additional uh, HVAC work we did in that PD was the addition of an electric unit heater to replace the, I believe it was a hydronic heater that was tied into the original town hall. Okay, thank you. Paul? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, speak to uh, Mr. Miner's uh, point, Councilor Miner. Uh, yes, uh, I do recall uh, taking place in those walkthroughs where uh, DTC came through when, and we did point out, uh, you know, areas uh, of concern, heat, electric, uh, those type of things there. So I, I agree with the Councilor Minor and that, you know, those things were brought up, they, they were discussed, uh, they were known. Uh, so to have them not be accounted for planned, uh, I think that falls uh, on that uh, part of the uh, project. Uh, the communication to the committee from DTC was non-existent for most of uh, the life of this project. Okay, uh, Frank, do you want to continue, please? Yeah, I was... Nope. Frank, excuse me. Uh, uh, go ahead, Don. Joe, I'm sorry. Uh, when you had all these discussions, is there actual documentation that took place at these meetings so that you, in fact, are not relying on memories and he said, you said, or is there an actual diary dialogue that took place each time you had these discussions? I guess that's for Paul, I guess. Um, Mr. Woods, uh, so was, as far as the, the walkthroughs, that, how that took place is either Downs and or DTC communicated to the town, uh, we need to meet you know, with this particular team. So at that point, you end up having either at the time Dave Langdon or uh, facility staff or IT staff walking through uh, and speaking about you know, some of the items of concern that we would have had. Um, so during that time period, I, again, I'm assuming uh, the, the design team. Uh, would have been maintaining uh, a log of uh, their walkthroughs and whatnot in, in, dis in the discussions. Uh, so we, we provided either administration uh, or those teams with information, heat load calculations on uh, computer equipment, things that would be uh, in those locations so that they would be made aware of it. Whether that made it through uh, into the appropriate people, I, I can't account for that. But I know that staff definitely went into the basement, went into the crawl spaces and pointed out anything and everything that could have impacted the project. So I guess I'd ask Frank or Chris, uh, is in fact these meetings, not maybe not just this specific one, but there's been numerous, numerous uh, topics brought up on errors and emissions, potential errors and emissions. So, and there's been several conversations where they've been discussed. Is there in fact minutes, notes, documentation for any of these items that will come up at some point? Or is this just gonna be, no, I didn't say that. Yes, I did say that. Oh, I thought you said that. So whoever wants to answer, I guess I'd just be curious. Yeah, Don, and I, I think I could pretty much speak for Chris on this too. Unfortunately, it was before our time. Um, that doesn't mean that there are, you know, that there's some minutes out there somewhere that can be uncovered and, and researched the fact of the matter is none of those meetings or discussions translated into details on the contract documents. 
Um, and those documents were vetted and signed off by the town. And ultimately that's what got built. Um, I can research it further to see if there are in fact the meetings. Again, I wasn't part of them, but I, I do know some of the players that were, and uh, I can talk to those people and see what, see what they have to offer. I, obviously everybody knows that, uh, you know, Dave Langdon's been long gone. Um, are the estimators that were involved on our side are no longer with our company. Uh, but we do have some people that are, you know, still left from the original uh, team that I can, I can try and reach out to and see what, see what we can come up with. All right. I just was curious. Thank you. Okay. Frank, uh, who else is up, James? I don't have a name. Uh, let's see. After Frank, I have Paul, then Don, and then Councillor Minor. Okay. Uh, Don, did you have further comments? Uh, I did not, Joe. Okay. Paul? Uh, I do not. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just lowered my hand. Okay. Just Councillor Minor then. Mr. Minor? Just quickly, not to labor on it, but I, I think that the vast majority of issues we've had with this entire project have been related to basically uh, investigatory or investigations done prior to construction or lack thereof have been what has bit us, you know, continuously from the environmental issues to the PD separation being more involved once we got into developing, you know, schematic design plans is where a lot of these issues evolved. And, you know, it, Money, money, quarterback doesn't do us any good. But I think at this point, we just need to wrap up the loose ends that we do have. And then again, hopefully we can work through these issues. And any any project of this scope and size is going to have errors and omissions. They just naturally occur when you have this much detail to build and construct a new building of this size. So hopefully we can work through this at the end and come to some general consensus either as a committee or the town to iron this out between the architects and the engineers to just go over these issues and try to resolve them. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Frank. We'll move it along. Yeah, Joe, just to close the loop on the agenda, just a couple uh, other sections I want to cover real quick. The, uh, the requisitions for payment, uh, James, if you could just scroll down a little for me, please. Oh, we went past section E. That's what I wanted to get to. Yeah, it's right at the bottom of the page. Oh, it's just a one liner. Okay. Yeah. It's cut off on my screen. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, it's cut off, but um, the, the March requisition, yeah. there we go. Thank you. The, uh, the March requisition that we did process again, keeping in mind it's, it's through the end of March. So at that point we had a $378,000 balance to finish um, excluding the retainage and, and most of that is just to get the site uh, completed, right. which, which you guys know that we're, we're pretty much <laughs> billing in full uh, this month to bill out the rest of the contract work. Right. All right. And then if we could uh, just talk uh, quickly on day two, just to go over that list again, to refresh everybody's mind. On the day two stuff, most of this you guys have seen already, the irrigation system, keeping that on day two. The uh, commissioning agent clarifications, I think it's safe to say we can take that off the list. Uh, we won't see an increase there. We've gotten through, uh, I'm going to say, the lion's share of the temperature control adjustments, and, and none of that was an increase in cost uh, to anybody to make that happen. 343. Uh, hopefully, Chris uh, can offer some feedback on this because I don't have too much at this point, only to tell you that an acoustician has been involved and they are supposed to make a recommendation on how to deal with the noise from RTU1 or rather vibration uh, from RTU1. I think it's the vibration that's more of a concern than anything else. Um, so that is on this list. The dry chem system 349. You guys have seen that one before. Uh, and then the privacy screen for the men's room, I believe that's on the second floor of the town hall. Um, the request to add FRP panels at the slop sinks in the custodial closets, uh, we kept that on the day two list. The art room cooling, again, not knowing 
where the where the budget was headed uh, back in February. We we kept this uh, off to the side on the day two list. Uh, again, with the forty five thousand roughly that's remaining in CIP, um, maybe this moves closer to the top of the list, or maybe it just stays on this list. I don't know. Um, that's for another discussion that we can have. And then three seventy nine, the uh, floor base. Inside the PD, it looks like I was juggling this between day two and then putting it as an approximate change. So it is a small one, insignificant really when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. So maybe this does move up into the approximate uh, list and uh, you know we, we present this at the next meeting for approval. Uh, but if we were to approve everything as part of this list for day two, it totals just over 118,000. Uh, obviously, the 60 grand for the dry chem plays into a, a good chunk of it that uh, we did confirm is not a code requirement. Um, it would be a, a nice to have. Um, anyway, that's that's where we ended up on day two. If I missed anything, you know, let me know. Um, but we should plan on having another discussion on on what we attack, if anything, as, as part of this list. You know, the irrigation system was another big one. You know, yeah. having sod without an irrigation system, uh, you know, I'm sure Don would agree with this. You really need the irrigation system to keep the sod alive. Uh, so again, yeah. it's not it's not up to me, but um, it, it's something that's still out there. We need to figure out what are we going to do. Do we do we go ahead and start putting together final numbers on some of this? But I really would like some direction so that come next month. I can come to you with final costs on some of this or or yeah. what? I'm not sure. Gail, you had a comment? Yeah, the town council actually, um, our, uh, the town manager had um, and the budget director looked over and we had some excess funds. Um, so we actually voted on doing a transfer because the excess funds from COVID reimbursements, vacant positions, whatever, and one of the items that was approved was $40,000 for the irrigation system. So there's the home run you were looking for, Frank. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't aware of that. That's good news. Yeah, good news. <laughs> that just that just happened. Was that last night? Um, yeah, it was discussed, I think, two weeks ago. And then we voted on it. I don't know. I forget. But we voted on it very recently. Yeah, last night. Yeah. So that's recent as you can be. Great news. Yeah. Uh, James, I didn't know who came after Gail. I don't see their... Next is Councillor Minor. Mr. Minor, please. No, Gail, she beat me to it. But yeah, that was discussed and approved last night, so we should have that allocation. And the other thing that maybe we can look into, I don't know if, uh, if uh, Jeff can touch base or Paul can touch base with the town manager to see if there is anything in addition that we might be able to allocate uh, for some of these other day two items that came up and, you know, more specifically the dry chem system, I think is something that would be favorable to have. I, I, I just think we should look to see if there is anything in addition, we might be able to, uh, to capture. Okay. Thank you. So you'll know on behalf of the committee, we have forwarded a list to Mr. Chapman of these day two items some time ago. And he came back and advised me that he was still deliberating on the budget and didn't want to commit this thing, um, at that point, but he was evaluating it. So I, I believe to go to your point, he'll continue to evaluate the list and make a decision that he feels is appropriate and let us know. Hey, Joe? Yes. Uh, just a question, uh, maybe you know, Chris or Gail, does it, or, or Frank, does it, the 35 or 40,000, does that include the entire site? And lowers the lower section for irrigation as well, or is it just the front and the? Uh, it's been so long, Don, that we threw this out there. I think it's just the uh, the uh, south side of the community center. Um, but let me double check on that. Okay, thank you. It's, it's been a while since uh, that we uh, looked at that. So. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Putat is next. Oh, please. Yeah, I just wanted to speak to Mr. Woods uh, as far as his qu question that he had. Um, uh, our superintendent of Parks and Recreations, Bill DeMayo, actually uh, made contact with a, um, 
a vendor for the irrigation. And I know that there was a price quote of paint at one point from that particular vendor, and that was the town hall campus. So that would include the, the north, the uh, along the sides on the east side of the library, as far as on the town hall side, as the south side, as well as uh, the, anything that would have been going in between, I think up towards the police department at that point. Uh, so I think that was the original design. Uh, and again, I don't know uh, it, which price quote that we're utilizing here as far as if that's a combination of that uh, pricing that we obtained from Mr. DeMeo uh, or if the 35,000 on the proposal for the COP331 um, is, is different than what we, we had from our outside vendor looking it's at. It's a larger number, Paul. The 35 is a larger number. Okay. And I think Frank did some due diligence and came up with that as an estimate, but it's good to hear it. It'll be all in now. Yeah. Thank you. It was 40,000, so <clears throat> okay. transferred. Thank you, Gail. Okay, Frank. Yeah, I just want to point out in case uh, nobody noticed it, but the, again, going back to the isolators for the RTU, which, you know, personally, I, I think is probably the most important to address just because of the noise and vibration that's being created because it is such a large unit, um, we we and we haven't earmarked anything to address that change. It's it's noted here as TBD. So I want everybody to just keep that in mind. And it really comes down to what we get back from the design team. And until we hear some final feedback, we won't be able to quantify, um, you know, implementing uh, or implementing anything for that particular change. Okay. When will you hear back from that? Uh, Chris, are you still there? I am still here, yeah. Um, Chris, can I think, you uh, sorry, Joe. Can you tell us uh, what you would estimate for a time frame to get back on that? Um, I don't think it should be any more than a couple weeks. Um, I think at this point, if, if we're going to have another meeting in um, May, it might make sense for Frank to do some due diligence on lifting that unit and providing the isolators if that is the ultimate uh, outcome, just so we have that number. Uh, okay. So we don't have to wait beyond that time, if that okay. makes sense. Yeah, it does. Thank you, Frank. Okay, yeah, that's all I had, Joe, aside from the photos. So if okay. no one else has any other questions, uh, we can jump right into the progress photos. Well, share those photos with us, sure. Okay, so I got a few photos here of the PD give you a, a snapshot of the finished product, looking at the um, east side of the PD. You can see the new veneer, the new uh, band of EFIS, the new um, egress door on the east side that was put in with a uh, new light fixture. And if we can go to the next slide, James. And there's a shot of the south elevation, again at the PD with the new stair, railing, walkway, um, new aluminum storefront you can see in the in the left corner and uh, just to also note that on the concrete retaining wall uh, for that stairwell uh, stairwell uh, we will be smoothing out that finish there and talking with uh, our superintendent today that's something that is planned uh, for next week next slide james and that's just to give you a, a broader view of the same elevation. And you can see the EFIS work that we also incorporated to tie that soffit in. Um, the column, that's the new column uh, to the left that supports dispatch now. That was a cantilevered section that tied into the old town hall before. Um, so that's part of that is the new EFIS that uh, I went over this evening with you. And this was a, a work in progress. Uh, this was taken uh, earlier today. And this is the lower parking lot adjacent to the PD. This is the uh, patching in to tie into the existing pavement. And that was getting wrapped up today. And that's just another angle looking the other way at the lower lot. And this was taken at about 6.30 this morning, um, right before we you know, mobilized the full crew to start the uh, binder course for the uh, upper lot adjacent to the town hall. So we go to the next slide. 
you can see this was taken, I think, around, I don't know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock, something like that, uh, making progress on the binder. We got a good, a good portion of it down at that point in time. Topsoil has been spread. <clears throat> Go to the next photo. And that's another uh, completed shot. This was taken at the end of the day around 3 o'clock of the, uh, the lower lot. And again, this one was also taken at the end of the day, just to show you where we ended up getting all the binder down. And uh, hopefully by Monday, we'll be able to put the wearing course on. And another snapshot of pretty much the same, same condition there. Trucks have uh, gotten out of the way. We took a cleaner shot of that same area. That's all of them. Okay, yeah. any questions? Just a quick one on, on the striping plan for the upper lot. Did the, I don't remember when the committee reviewed that layout last. Can we see the updated in terms of the parking spaces? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I can share that with you. I don't have anything uh, prepared right now to put yeah, on the screen, but if you could at some point so that we can just take a look at it. Okay. <clears throat> And I want the town to also see that, <clears throat> excuse me, so that there's no question of issues with, uh, you know, how it's laid out, because I don't know that the town has seen it either for a while. Okay, yeah, we would meet, need to make a decision on that pretty quick. But uh, yeah, I can um, get that over to you, Joe, okay. by tomorrow morning. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Hey, uh, Joe, could I... Ask yes, Frank a question. Yes, hey, Frank, I, I think I know the answer, but are there sleeves underneath the pavement to, to cross over from one side of the lot to the other for irrigation? <laughs> no. Is there water from any? Well, that might be for another conversation, but uh, if they're going to do it, <laughs> I don't know if they could do it that quickly, but uh, you might want to put in the sleeve before you... Uh, put your top coat on if in fact there's interest to do that. Frank, you have any comment on that? No, I mean, we, we can, uh, we can revisit that now that we have some, some late breaking information here that we have approval. Um, we can revisit that. Okay, great. Thank you, Don. Yep. My only concern would be the availability of any irrigation uh, contractor at this point. I think, you know, talk, talking to some of these guys, they're, they're pretty much flat out at this point. But uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make some phone calls. Okay, thank you. Councilor Minor has well, his hand raised, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Minor, please. Yeah, I think the bulk of it you could probably get to from the north, Joe, to get down into that lower side. And everything else can just come in from the other side that's already been completed, just using a mold to get underneath the sidewalks. I think they'll, they'll be all right. Okay. Thank you. Any other business pertinent to the committee? Public participation. James, any member of the public? No one with us this evening, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, sir. Comments by committee members? Just, uh, Joe, I just have a quick Let's comment go, to Frank. It, it, it looks great. It really looks great. I, I, from the time I left this uh, uh, at the end of December there to when I came back, it's night and day. Looks looks really nice. Nice job. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's coming together. It's almost almost there. So hopefully by the next meeting, we can we can show the rest of it in, uh, in one completed piece. Yeah, looks good. Yeah, thank Thanks. you for that. And also in the evening, I would encourage the citizens of Newington, people are interested, especially in the, the project for a long, long time, to go out there in the evening and see those floodlights that are, emanate from the building. It's just, Chris and I were talking about this today. It's just outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Okay. I think, and I know that uh, the committee's proud of this building, and I believe, in fairness, on balance, 
so should the community be proud of it, especially when you get in that brand new community center. For that's, sure. That's a real large footprint and um, would challenge any other town's community center in a wide spectrum of towns and areas. Okay, thank you for your participation tonight. And um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So I'll move Gerard Mortensen. Okay, a second. Uh, second, Don Woods. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye, thanks everybody. Thank you.